Ever wondered how ultrasonic level sensors work? These ingenious devices are vital in a multitude of industries, from wastewater treatment to food and beverage production. Using sound waves, they accurately measure the level of liquids or solids in tanks and containers. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of ultrasonic level sensors, exploring their working principles, the different types available, and their importance in our everyday lives. So gear up and dive into the fascinating world of ultrasonic level sensors with us. First, let's understand the basics. Ultrasonic level sensors are a marvel of modern technology that use sound waves to measure distance. At its core, an ultrasonic level sensor is a device that measures the time it takes for a sound wave to travel from the sensor to an object and then return. This may remind you of how bats navigate, and you wouldn't be wrong. It's the same principle. The sensor emits high-frequency sound waves at a target, be it a liquid or solid surface. When these sound waves hit the target, they bounce back towards the sensor. The sensor then measures the time it took for the sound waves to return. By knowing the speed of sound, the sensor can calculate the distance to the target. That's how it determines the level of a liquid or solid in a container. The concept is simple, but the technology is quite impressive. Now onto the working principle. The magic of ultrasonic level sensors lies in their use of sound waves. These waves, invisible to the naked eye, are the workhorse of this technology. Here's how it all unfolds. When an ultrasonic level sensor is activated, it releases a burst of sound waves. These waves are of a high frequency usually beyond the range of human hearing. They surge forward, moving through the air until they encounter the surface of the liquid or solid that we're trying to measure. Upon hitting this surface, something remarkable happens. The waves, instead of being absorbed or dispersed, bounce back. They return to their point of origin, where the sensor is waiting to catch them. This is where the real calculation begins. The sensor you see has been keeping track of time. From the moment it released the sound waves, to the moment it caught them on their return, it's been ticking away the seconds. Or, to be more precise, the milliseconds. And here's the crux of the whole operation. The sensor knows the speed of sound in air. It's approximately 343 meters per second. Armed with this knowledge, and the time it took for the sound waves to return, it can now perform a simple calculation. It multiplies the speed of sound by the time it took for the waves to travel back and forth. Then it divides this product by two. And voila! The result of this calculation is the distance between the sensor and the surface of the liquid or solid. In essence, the sensor uses the principles of echolocation, much like a bat navigating through the dark, to measure the level of the liquid or solid. It's a beautiful dance of physics and mathematics, of sound waves moving through space and time, all to provide a simple yet crucial piece of information. The level of a liquid or solid in a container. Quite ingenious, isn't it? Let's discuss the most common type of ultrasonic level sensor. The star of the show in many applications is the time of flight sensor. This sensor takes center stage due to its simplicity and effectiveness. Time of flight sensors are all about timing. They emit a sound wave and then start the clock. Tick tock, tick tock. They patiently wait for the echo to bounce back from the surface of the liquid or solid. The moment the echo returns, the clock stops. This round trip time is what the sensor measures, but the sensor's job doesn't stop there. It still needs to calculate the distance to the surface. And for that, it relies on the speed of sound in air, which is roughly 343 meters per second. Now you might be wondering why we're talking about the speed of sound. Well, that's because the sensor uses this speed to translate time into distance. It uses the formula, distance equals speed multiplied by time divided by two. The division by two accounts for the round trip nature of the sound wave's journey. So with the speed of sound in hand, the time measured by the sensor and a touch of arithmetic, the sensor calculates the distance to the surface. And that's the beauty of time of flight sensors. They turn time into distance. With just speed, time, and a little math, we have our distance. Another interesting type is the frequency modulated continuous wave, or let's simply call it the FMCW sensor. This isn't your run of the mill ultrasonic sensor. The FMCW sensor operates on a principle that's as unique as its name. Instead of just emitting sound waves and waiting for them to bounce back, 
the FMCW sensor emits a continuous wave. But here's the twist. The frequency of this wave isn't constant. It gradually changes over time, creating a unique pattern of high and low frequencies. So, how does this help in measuring distance? Well, when the continuous wave bounces back from the surface of the liquid or solid, it carries with it the imprint of the changing frequencies. The sensor then captures this returned wave and analyzes the frequency shift. That is the difference between the frequency of the wave it sent out and the frequency of the wave it received back. This frequency shift is the sensor's secret to calculating distance. It's like a sonic fingerprint, unique to each surface and distance. The sensor uses this information to determine how far away the surface of the liquid or solid is. It's a clever way of measuring distance, don't you think? Sound complicated? It's actually quite straightforward. There are even more specialized types of sensors. Diving deeper into the realm of ultrasonic level sensors, we encounter two additional types, guided wave sensors and capacitive sensors. Each of these has its unique capabilities, making them suitable for various applications. Guided wave sensors are a rather specialized type of ultrasonic level sensor. They're typically used for measuring the level of liquids in tanks or containers that come with obstructions or narrow openings. Now you might be wondering how do they work? Well, guided wave sensors employ waveguides such as rods or cables to direct the sound waves from the sensor to the liquid surface and back. This process of directing the sound waves is crucial in ensuring accurate measurements. By taking note of the time it takes for the waves to travel through the waveguide, the sensor can determine the liquid level. Quite ingenious, isn't it? On the other hand, capacitive ultrasonic level sensors are a unique blend of ultrasonic technology and capacitive measurement principles. These sensors set off an ultrasonic pulse and monitor the change in capacitance between the sensor and the surface of the liquid or solid. This change in capacitance is directly proportional to the distance, thus enabling the sensor to determine the level accurately. It's a perfect example of how combining different technologies can result in a more powerful, more precise tool. It's important to note that both guided wave sensors and capacitive sensors are typically used in more complex, demanding applications, where standard ultrasonic sensors may not be sufficient. They are proof that in the world of engineering, there's always a solution to a problem, no matter how challenging it may seem. To sum up, guided wave sensors and capacitive sensors leverage the principles of ultrasonics and capacitive measurements to provide accurate level measurements. They are designed to tackle unique challenges and are most commonly found in applications that require a high degree of precision and reliability. After all, they're specialized tools for specialized tasks. So, where do we use these sensors, you might ask? The answer is virtually everywhere. Ultrasonic level sensors have made their mark in a multitude of industries and applications, proving themselves to be both versatile and indispensable. In the realm of wastewater treatment, these sensors play a crucial role in maintaining the balance of our ecosystems. They accurately measure and monitor the levels of waste, ensuring that treatment processes run smoothly and efficiently. When it comes to the food and beverage industry, ultrasonic level sensors ensure that your favorite drinks are produced with precision. They measure the level of liquids in vats and tanks, making sure that quantities are just right, down to the last drop. In chemical processing plants, these sensors help to keep workers safe. They measure hazardous materials from a safe distance, preventing potential exposure and promoting a secure working environment. But the applications don't stop there. You'll also find these sensors in oil and gas, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, and even in your home appliances. They're part of the reason why your washing machine knows when to stop filling with water. The benefits of ultrasonic level sensors are certainly impressive. They offer non-contact measurement, ensuring minimal wear and tear. They provide high accuracy, enabling precise control and monitoring. They are compatible with a wide range of materials, making them adaptable to various situations. So there you have it. Ultrasonic level sensors, a versatile tool with wide ranging applications. These sensors are more than just devices, they're integral components in our everyday lives.